a rare quiet became another day of war, shattering a ceasefire only hours after it started and crushing a bit of hope that the agony of Aleppo was over. Especially for those still trapped in what's left of their homes in the east of the city. Oh my God. All the people were, let's say, uh, psyched and happy with the agreement about leaving and evacuating the city, finally. And they were just preparing themselves, and they think that the regime is going to take a ground, a ground uh, for them. Good morning, my friends. Tens of shells are raining down on the besieged areas in Aleppo. There are injured in the field hospitals, injured as a result of the bombardment by the regime forces and allied Iranian militias. And yet, before first light, the green government buses had pulled up to the edges of East Aleppo. That was the deal. They waited and waited. Rebel fighters and their families were to board these buses, bearing the flag and the face of the man they fought for four years, to be taken to an area still in opposition hands. But the deal brokered by Russia and Turkey broke down. President Assad's ally, Iran, imposed more conditions. This could take time. A people displaced and dispossessed are desperate to end this anguish. In recent weeks, more than 100,000 escaped the front lines of East Aleppo. Many did not. The UN is raising concern about alleged massacres of civilians by pro-government forces. A grave accusation dismissed today by President Assad. If we liberate Aleppo from the terrorists, there would be, I mean, the Western uh, officials and the mainstream media, they're going to be worried about the civilians. They're not worried when the opposite happens, when the terrorists killing those civilians. His forces have their enemy cornered, but these latest pictures from the Syrian army show they're not yet ready to give up this fight. And the rebels are pushing back. Please do set BBC News, Beirut.